the Sustainable Stability Grantor. Um, this evening, we have um, invited along Professor Mark Gillen. I'm very delighted he can join us. And he's going to be taking us um, on an evening titled The Fast Tracking of Race to Zero Emissions in the Maritime Sector. So I'd just like to welcome you all here uh, for this evening. Uh, okay, thank, thank you very much, Anthony. And uh, delighted to, to be invited this evening to share over the next uh, uh, 30, 40 minutes uh, the journey that Artemis Technologies and our Belfast Maritime Consortium are on uh, and what's called the race to decarbonize uh, the maritime sector. So what I wanted to do tonight is maybe take you through a little bit of the history of Artemis, what the Belfast Maritime Consortium are, 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 are trying to achieve, the time frame that we're trying to do it in, why it's transformative uh, and why it's so exciting uh, for, for Belfast and, and for uh, Northern Ireland um, and the implications it has uh, glo globally as well. Um, uh, so, without sort of further ado, just to, to, to run run through a little bit of history about Artemis Technologies. So, Artemis Technologies is a spin-off uh, of Artemis Racing, uh, and Artemis Racing is a successful America's uh, uh, Cup uh, yacht racing team. It was formed in 2006, so it had over a decade of uh, racing heritage uh, before we established Artemis Technologies. Um, and we established Artemis Technologies in, in 2017, really to, to look to commercialize the hydrofoiling technology, which I'll go into a bit later, which is basically an underwater uh, wing, uh, our computer simulation tools and simulator, and also our solid wing sail intellectual property, um, which was very, very interesting to me as an aerospace engineer by training. Uh, and uh, somebody who's been heavily involved in sort of fluid dynamics and um, just just to understand the complexity of what we're you know what we're trying to, to simulate not only are you trying to simulate obviously the the wind uh, and obviously the water uh, but you know transition from laminar to turbulent over the foils and also the autonomous control systems <clears throat> and, and, and in addition to very highly complex lightweight uh, uh, composite materials so Artemis Technologies, as I said, formed in 2017. Uh, we form basically uh, two parts in the company. One is doing engineering services, both for high performance sport and commercial clients, but also we're developing products, um, including the, the simulator product you see here, but more recently looking at looking into zero emissions vessels. And the mission is, is, is very simple. Uh, what Having had a background in uh, both aerospace to start with, uh, and as Nancy said, for 15 years in Formula One, uh, where I led sort of Williams race team and also Jaguar, uh, Land, uh, Jaguar Land Rover and uh, Red Bull, the race engineering team. Um, I then got into automotive uh, supply of test equipment for, for automotive OEMs and saw very much first at hand the the very quick pace that the automotive industry was moving towards electrification and subsequently aerospace. But maritime was really and, and, and continues to be quite slow along this journey. Um, when you look at the funding uh, platform uh, that, that exists, say, in the UK uh, for, for the transportation side, aerospace is by far the number one funded sector, followed by automotive. But maritime is a really, really small part of that, that graph. So it's maybe no surprise that the innovation levels in, in maritime are much, much less and slower uh, sort of integration than say in aerospace or automotive. So our mission at Artemis Technologies is to lead that decarbonization of the maritime sector through innovation and sustainable technologies and products. And actually the picture you see here is uh, one of our old uh, AC-45 boats uh, running up and down Belfast Harbour uh, when we launched uh, Artemis Technologies in, in Belfast in 2017. Uh, and I was on a support vessel, which wasn't a foiling vessel. And I can assure you, I was pretty envious watching this vessel, which has got no, no fuel on board, no engine, uh, going up and down the harbour at 40 knots. Uh, very, very uh, sort of... Uh, uh, with with a, a very good ride comfort when I'm bashing up and down in a, a diesel powered support vessel and feeling a bit queasy at the end of it, whereas uh, obviously the people on there were having a bit of, a bit of a, 
a, a very nice sort of armchair ride. So it it wasn't lost in the camera crew uh, from uh, UTV that they'd rather be in that vessel than, than the one that we were on. So what we want to show to you today is how we're taking the technology from then, uh, sort of uh, in the sort of mid mid uh, sort of 2015s, 2016s into uh, the sort of the the 2021, 2022, and where we're going. So almost looking at a problem statement. And having had a, a sort of career um, uh, in, in, a, in a number of industries, I've long since learned that it's it's one thing to have a great idea, but uh, it's also you need somebody that has to make it commercially viable. Uh, and in terms of the maritime transportation problem, as a as a maritime transport, we emit just over just sorry just under a thousand million tons of carbon dioxide annually. And responsible for about two and a half percent of total greenhouse gas emissions. So the International Maritime Organization, which is headquartered in London, just actually uh, opposite House of Parliament, uh, is aiming to cut those emissions by 50 percent by 2050. And uh, one could say that that's maybe not uh, aggressive enough, but just in terms of the pace of development, that is uh, quite a statement. And the maritime industry, as I mentioned, is really playing catch up particularly to automotive uh, uh, and to a lesser extent into aerospace. And I was at a, a, a conference uh, probably by 20, early 2017, where the, the previous chief scientific advisor in the UK government stated that time is no longer on our side, that we needed immediate coordinated effort uh, to, to, to move to net zero emissions economy to, by 2050. And that coordination, that collaboration is key. Um, uh, and I was very fortunate to, to be at a series of presentations by Dimot Ling Laser, who's the, the chief executive of UKRI, who was doing a virtual tour, tour to Northern Ireland on Monday. And uh, she quite rightly highlighted the importance of collaboration. Uh, and collaboration, not just in individual areas, but across universities, businesses of all sizes, and really trying to connect those dots to move uh, uh, and to really move the dial on these technologies, these process, and implement quickly and at scale. So that's what we're trying to do uh, at Artemis Technologies. Uh, in uh, 20, 20, 2017, 2018, uh, we uh, looked at where we could actually locate ourselves. We had initially set up in the Maxwell Centre in Cambridge University. We also had an office at Burnham, uh, which is just outside uh, Sly uh, in, in England and what we were looking at is a deep water port uh, and somewhere where we could find a new headquarters uh, and really look to collaborate with a mixture uh, of, and, and that's the important thing, a mixture of businesses both large and small, supply chain, universities and also colleges from the skills side. So not just skills from the postdoc level but also right down uh, through the complete swathe, uh, right down to those starting off, understanding uh, composite from a technician perspective and the apprenticeship sides. And this real mix, because one thing growing an in industry that it's really difficult to grow a new industry if ultimately the workforce isn't there to support it. Um, so we set about um, putting together a consortium uh, just uh, surreptitiously at the time, uh, Strength in Places uh, from UKRI was being uh, just launched uh, um, as a na national uh, sort of uh, uh, competition, uh, which had about 186 million in it uh, as a total funding pot. And very fortunately, we, we, we were successful in securing one of seven uh, uh, successful bids. Uh, our bid was 53 million in total of which we secured 33 million in UKRI funding. And that was to develop a zero emissions commercial vessel as a demonstrator to really take our idea, and I'll, I'll go into the detail in a minute, from an initial concept right through to working demonstrator uh, within 41 months. Uh, and we started in September uh, of 2020 and the consortium partners are, are, are listed uh, in, the, in the blocks on the right hand side. So Artemis Technologies, we lead the consort, the Belfast Maritime uh, Consortium. But I'm really proud of the, the partners that we have. And, and it's a mixture. So it's local councils, both ours 
North Down Borough Council, Belfast City Council. Great to have Belfast Harbour involved. Uh, when you're doing anything transformative in the maritime side, you need to work very closely uh, with with uh, with the harbour uh, and uh, Belfast Harbour being fantastic, the harbour master. Uh, very pleased to have the two universities, Queen's and Ulster, um, and each each of us has got a particular part to play in, in, in this very complex uh, uh, programme. Belfast met on the skills side and the apprenticeship side, and actually really, really impressed by, in Northern Ireland, the apprenticeship schemes that are available. Uh, having sort of uh, uh, lived 22 years uh, in England and coming, coming back over to, to, to live permanently uh, in uh, last year, really, really pleased to, to, to see the the pace at which uh, Belfast Met is, is able to move. We have Spirit uh, involved, uh, who obviously Bombardier uh, named, and actually I'm an ex-Shorts brother person back in the day without trying to age myself too much. Um, uh, Catalyst as well, uh, Creative Composites, uh, uh, an SME uh, based, based in Lisbon. Um, Energia, uh, we operate with uh, Par NI and Invest NI. NIAS as well, um, from the sort of composite, uh, sort of proof of concept side, and obviously, as I mentioned, the two universities. So 13 partners uh, working together uh, in unison in a very highly collaborative manner uh, to develop uh, this, this project. And I'll, I'll show you the sort of the two stages. We're actually building two vessels. Um, we have a small 11 meter test mule, which I'll show you later, um, which is going in the water. Uh, towards the end of this year, uh, maybe very early next year. And then we have the larger 250 passenger plus, uh, foot passenger plus uh, demonstration vessel, which will run between Bangor and Belfast, uh, which will be in the tail end, of, sort of mid to tail end of 2023. And what we're doing is we're combining three real sort of cutting edge technologies. We're combining uh, sort of hydrofoiling uh, technology from the cut, we're combining it with uh, energy recovery electric drive system from Formula One uh, and also the autonomous controlled uh, carbon composite uh, designs from aerospace, from the cap, uh, and uh, putting those all together to create something that is, is truly transformative. Um, I'll go through why sometimes you look at some you know, uh, vessels and you think, well, actually, those are the same and why they're not the same. Um, and this particular vessel has about a 90% efficiency rating over a standard uh, non-foiling vessel. In terms of governance, with that amount of fund, government funding, uh, we actually put in place quite, quite, quite a detailed uh, governance structure. Um, so we brought in a, a mix of independent uh, 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 board members um, and also board members from, from the project. Uh, so Nusrat Ghani, uh, who was the Maritime Minister uh, a few years ago, is, is our chair. Uh, I'm the Programme Director, in addition to being Chief Operations Officer for, for Artemis Technologies. We have three uh, board members from the consortium, uh, Nick Laird from, from Spirit, Joe O'Neill uh, from the Harbour, and Ian Percy uh, from Artemis. And then we have, very fortunate to have uh, three fantastic independent uh, board members, Jane Brady, who will be well known uh, in Northern Ireland, who's the Digital Commissioner of Belfast Regional City Deal, uh, we work very closely with. Uh, David Morant, who's Managing Director of Scorpio UK, uh, who operates a very large vessel fleet. And Harry Theokery, uh, who up until recently was Chair of Maritime UK and is one of the preeminent uh, uh, legal financiers. So they, uh, as, as a governance body keep me right um, and keep the programme right uh, and say that's really important uh, when we're dealing with such a large uh, sort of uh, uh, government funding and support. What I wanted to, to show you though is a little bit, it's, it's about a three minute video um, uh, on the cap. Now as I say I come from uh, Formula One for sort of 15 years and probably a decade on the pit, pit wall of various teams and uh, I used to, if I'm ever going out, never say too much about F1 because it's a bit of a marmite sport. People either love it or, or, or hate it. Um, uh, and in, in the cup, we see something similar. It's something about high-performance sport. 
So what I wanted to do is give you a bit of a flavor for what one of these vessels looks like. And these are obviously the previous cup, um, which uh, is effectively the footprint of the vessel that then is brought forward into CLGP. Um, but this gives you a feel for the maneuverability uh, of the vessel, uh, the control systems on the vessel, with the, with the knowledge that these are not autonomously controlled, these are controlled uh, humanly and part humanly. Uh, and if my boss Ian Percy was here, he's a double Olympic gold uh, uh, yachtsman with, with, with silver as well to his name, so one of the world's best sailors, he would say the same thing. And I'm, I mean, I'm no sailor at all, but uh, that him following a computer was better than him and him off the boat uh, with the computer doing the work would have been better still. And when you see the simulator in action, you get a feel for, for what he means. So the, this video shows the vessels what's possible uh, when you have people at the top of their game uh, actually controlling them. But make no mistake, with them off the vessel and the computer doing the work and the autonomous control systems, what you see in terms of the uh, unstable nature, which obviously leads to the maneuverability of the vessel, is, is much improved. So I'll, I'll be quiet for a few minutes and play this. Sometimes the sign doesn't come through too well, but uh, I, I hope you get a flavor for it. So this is Ar Artemis Technologies a few in the, the previous cup, which we were the Swedish America's Cup uh, team. And uh, you'll, you'll hear my boss, Ian, getting a bit excited at a few of the uh, more dubious decisions during the event. So that gives you a bit of a feel uh, for uh, what the vessels are capable of. And I said, those are non-powered vessels. Um, so when I, I was uh, sort of asked to sort of uh, link up with Artemis uh, Racing at the stage, uh, and they were looking at sort of commercialization of the IP uh, around uh, the hydrofoiling technology and the solid wing sails, obviously coming from a sort of Formula One uh, background and had involved 
for quite a lot of time on energy recovery systems. We sort of came up with the idea uh, within Artemis of why don't we combine uh, the energy recovery system technology from F1 for motorsport in with that from the cup uh, for the hydrofoiling uh, technology from the cup and then really create something which is uh, really quite unique. Um, so over the last few years, we've been developing and uh, with patent applications and trademarking what's called the Artemis E foiler which looks like an aircraft wing under the water, uh, which you can see with the winglets, uh, uh, control surfaces. And then in the cutout, um, if you can see my uh, cursor in this bulb is the motor generator unit uh, gearbox to a shaft onto the propeller. And then up through the vertical goes the cabling uh, into the power electronics uh, inverter and into the battery energy storage system. And with that, we're actually able to demast the vessel uh, and effectively then create a zero emissions electric vessel, uh, which is able to go at high speed, very, very efficient with about 90% efficiency over, over a standard uh, vessel. And we are around about 97% efficient from battery through to shaft to the propeller. So it is really transformative. So the, the real trick is being able to use the ultra high power density uh, motor generator unit, so it's both a motor and a generator, uh, along with uh, equally impressive in the line uh, system, electric drive system, coupled with an equally impressive uh, uh, knowledge of carbon composite vessel design and hydrofoils. And uh, the third piece in it is the knowledge of autonomous control, flight control, because we are flying this vessel uh, autonomously. Uh, just like on a on, on a uh, uh, in terms of autonomous control, just like uh, on a modern aircraft, when the pilot puts a uh, motion onto the uh, joystick, uh, we do exactly the same. So the, the pilot isn't physically doing the individual control of the surfaces; uh, the software is doing it, it for them. We're doing exactly the same on the vessel. Uh, and as I say, that that is the crux of being able to, to fly these vessels, get them out of the water and get the drag reduction to get the increased range. So what does it look like on a sort of 250 passenger water ferry? Uh, this, this is what it looks like. Um, I'll go through a little bit on the technology behind it, but the really important thing is, it's not just about the electric drivetrain, it's not just about the composites, it's also about the flight control sensors, the collision avoidance system, the steering system, the anti-fouling, the biofouling. So unlike one of those race boats where you, you pull them out of the water every night and give them a good clean, obviously you can't do it on a vessel like this, on a commercial vessel. So we have to have the ability to do that. We also want it to be a, a uh, vessel that people want to get onto. So not a noisy, uh, slightly uh, sort of uh, overpowering fumes from a diesel. Uh, we, we, we want to have it something that is a nice environment for, the, for doing uh, sort of uh, trips at speed in comfort um, and being able also to get your first last mile uh, sort of bikes, e-scooters, e whatever it may be on, onto the vessel and being able to get that first last mile journey as well complete. So looking a little bit more into it, this particular vessel, which is looking at the sort of uh, the end of 23 uh, for the demonstration between Bangor and Belfast, just as a demonstrator uh, of, of a commercial uh, uh, water uh, ferry. Uh, the vessel is about 35 metres in length, about 14 metres in beam, uh, about 90 tonnes. And we're scalable in, in our technology uh, from uh, very low tonnage, sort of 10 tons right up to about 120 tons. And we'll do about 40 knots with an 80 nautical mile range in between charging. Um, and to say that the boat actually foils around about 19 knots, depending on the foil design. One of the interesting things along the journey that we've had since sort of you know, the 2017, when the sort of thought concept came up is, obviously we were originally looking at sort of, you know, from a zero emissions perspective, but when you look at the other attributes, suddenly it becomes really, an, you know, it comes back to my bit of it's, it's one thing to have a, a technology, it's another thing to have a, you know, it has to make commercial sense. It also has to have, a, you know, the other attributes help to making that commercial sense. So not only is it zero emissions, you have little to no wake, 
which means that for sort of close close uh, to shore or within river environments where bank erosion is an issue, we can go at high speed um, without the traditional wake wash uh, and bank uh, impact that you see with, with standard vessels. Very comfortable ride. If you ever get a chance to come down uh, and, and uh, see on the simulator or hopefully uh, uh, in, a, in a number of months time we'll have the smaller vessel in, in the water uh, for, for demonstration you will see the real difference in ride comfort. And actually for that, we are, we are going to be running a side-by-side, -side, a sister ship to the 11 meter vessel uh, to be able to show what the difference between a foiling and non-foiling vessel is, comparing literally apples with apples, except for the foiling system. Um, so not be able, just looking at the range and the, and the emissions reductions, but also looking at the change to the weight, the change to the ride, um, as I mentioned, it's scalable up to about 120 tonnes. Um, the autonomous control I mentioned, the, the efficiency saving, but there's other, a couple of other interesting attributes which are on its quiet performance, so there's very little noise, and also for some other attributes such as a very low heat signature. So this is what our 11 metre vessel looks like. It's a, I mean, this is obviously a render, but it's a very accurate render uh, compared to the, the de detailed designs. So already all the long lead time items are out in the supply chain uh, and uh, we're looking forward to receiving the first of those in the assembly side. And I say this will be in the water by uh, the tail end of this year, uh, first few weeks of, of next year. Uh, and this is a foiling uh, high speed vessel uh, doing around about 60 nautical miles uh, at, at 25 knot cruising speed. Uh, with a draft of run about 2.1 metres um, and takeoff speed. So that's when it comes onto the foils at 12 knots. And this is a composite construction. And as I mentioned, we will also be running right beside it, a sister ship, which is identical hull structure, except it's non-foiling. Uh, and it will have internal combustion engines to be able to do a back-to-back -back comparison between what you, you can buy at the moment versus hopefully the, the future of, 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 of maritime transportation. And this is only possible by the investment that we've had uh, in, in simulation and software. Uh, so actually within Artemis over the, uh, well, well over a decade, uh, we've been lucky through the CAP to have had over a quarter of a billion pounds of investment in our technology and capability. And it focuses around what we call the digital twin and, and the, the real-time simulator, so the human and hardware in the loop simulator. Uh, and that simulator is at the hub of our design process. And when we talk about sustainability, it's not just about sustainability of the, in terms of the product uh, and its emissions control, but it's also the design of the product and the reduction in waste along that journey. So a traditional V development cycle from idea through to product uh, relies on probably quite a large number of prototypes and a lot of mistakes. Uh, obviously not intentionally made but along the journey you do make mistakes and you have to rework and go back in the design process and build more prototypes so more and more just as an automotive and aerospace and the maritime really in, engaging with uh, the simulation and simulator to try and minimize the need for prototypes costly prototypes and also minimize the waste in the system and this just gives you a feel for our design process and we have adapted that over many a year. So it's not just in the cap, we do a lot of work in other areas, including solid wing sails for, for large vessels, uh, through to what you can see here on the, on the catamaran for the, the passenger ferry, right through to the takeoff and uh, loading cases on the 11 meter vessel. And this, the, bo the bottom right picture just shows our simulator uh, uh, and this is actually sh shown in our Burnham facility, but it's now operational in, in, in Belfast or actually in our Lisbon facility at the moment. Um, so it's exactly the same sim. We, we, we brought it across and, and reconfigured it and recommissioned it. Uh, and we're using that to develop the 11 metre vessel and the 215 passenger uh, vessel, the 35 metre vessel. So the cockpit you see is actually a cockpit for a cup vessel. Uh, but with that cockpit comes off and we're able to put in the cockpit for the 11 meter uh, small test mule and also uh, the working environment for the larger vessel you see in the top left. 
what we also have with the consortium is a real interest in learning from the consortium. So learning from the universities on collision avoidance, on sensor technology, on different mechanisms for building the hydrofoils. So within Artemis, over the years, we have developed our own system. And actually what you see here is our sort of from San Francisco uh, facility where we were building cup vessels uh, and looking at uh, the uh, sort of the various uh, uh, testing systems going in, into the system. Uh, but we're really keen to learn from the universities and keen to learn from creative uh, and from spirit on the mechanisms of building things uh, in volume uh, and to cost as opposed to at Artemis where we do things in, in lower numbers. Um, so it, it's trying to combine the sort of racing heritage uh, with the knowledge that we have on the simulation with also the production knowledge that we have in our consortium members and also the uh, the knowledge from the R&D uh, from the universities but also working with the, the council because without the ability to operate um, from the, the regions, I mean, this is the same globally, uh, then we, 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 you know, it's one thing to have an electric vessel. It's another thing to have the infrastructure in place to be able to, to operate the electric vessel and be able to get the passengers on board to be able to demonstrate it. Uh, so this is what we have in place uh, along this journey. Um, and uh, as I say, I'm uh, looking forward to hopefully some, some uh, very detailed questions. I'm happy to answer them uh, as best I can. Uh, but hopefully it gives you a feel for the journey that we are on as a consortium over this next uh, sort of remaining three years um, and uh, looking forward to inviting you up uh, or across in the Belfast Harbour to, to be able to uh, see the, the, vessel in the vessels in action. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Mark. Um...